Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review A Nightmare on Elm Street 2010, Never Sleep Again. Directed by Samuel Baer, starring Jackie Earl Haley, Rooney Mara, Kyle Gallner, and Katie Cassidy. A Nightmare on Elm Street is about Freddy Krueger, who was murdered by the parents of the children he was molesting. He now haunts those children in their dreams. What do we like about this movie? I gotta start this off with a bang, to be honest, and probably the most controversial topic that everybody wants to know. Jackie Earl Haley as... Freddy Krueger. I thought he did a pretty decent job. He was frightening to look at, and he had such a creepy tone and feel to his whole character. Because he's not the same slapstick Freddy that we know, but I think he nailed it as this reimagining of Freddy Krueger. These iconic characters lend themselves to be reinvented. Right? I don't ever want to see Freddy Krueger just stop being made. I want to see new movies from him. So eventually Robert Englund obviously can't play that character forever. And I think Jackie Earl Haley stepped in. He lended a, a serious note to the character that to reboot the movie was necessary. Uh, I know people might not like that, but I enjoyed the performance, to be honest. And the look was great. Another thing that I really liked about this movie, and I know that it is a point of criticism for a lot of people, but it's the backstory of Freddy. I think they did a really great job at leaving it up to the audience to decide whether or not Freddy is the molester that the townspeople are claiming that he is. I do like that it caused some issues between some of the characters because they weren't too sure if Freddy was a good guy or a bad guy. And I think the cinematography, the set decoration, and the whole style of this movie really worked, especially considering Freddy's past. Remember me? In a lot of reboots, you can get lost in the idea of just constantly calling back to the earlier movies. But these ones, while they were there, I felt were more subtle, more in line with actually the actual plot of the movie, the actual story of the movie. I don't think that it disgraced what came before it. I think it, I think it respected the material. The rest of the cast, there's not much fault in any of the characters. They were played well, acted well. The parents especially, I think, knowing that they had something that they were hiding the kids from, but still caring, still showing concern, I think they were acted well. The kids themselves all did a serviceable job, and there's no complaints there. Now it's strange to even say this, but I like the concept of this movie. I really like the jumping between the present day and like the dream world because they did a great job at not letting the audience know what world we were actually in. So there are a lot of moments where you think you're in the regular, normal, day-to-day -day life of some character and then all of a sudden something gets fucked up and there's Freddy scraping on a chalkboard telling you what's up and trying to slice your face off. What didn't we like about this movie? Now, well, I mentioned I liked the character design. There's something about the makeup that makes it look like he's not saying what he's saying. It seems like all of his lines are recorded in a studio and a guy in a mask is saying them. If you just looked at Freddy, he looks pretty cool. The moment he starts talking, it looks like his mouth is like a puppet. And that's unfortunate. Do you think you can bring the dead back to life? When you look at Jason, Michael Myers, all that kind of stuff, they're emotionalist, they're speechless, so masks really work. But the difference about Freddy was he talked, he was a joker. He made a lot of expressions with his face. And I think that you're right. I think that's definitely what's missing. But even not comparing him to Robert Englund's Freddy, yeah. He almost looks like a jackass grandfather mask. I'm sure that if this makeup was brought to face off even, we would have V. Neal just ripping into this dude who made the makeup because if you can't talk in it, there's no point in having That's it. That's the first, one of the first things they make you do. I know. <laughs> if, you, if you can't move in it, you can't talk in it, it's yeah. over. Glenn Hendrich is gonna rip you apart, dude. <laughs> so one of the things I didn't like about this movie, and it was kind of weird, but it starts off like it seems like it's gonna be a movie about Katie Cassidy's character. Then it skips to the other guy who ends up in jail, 
And then finally we get to Nancy as the main character. So it seems like we're like a third or like halfway through before we spend more times with the main characters that are facing off with Freddy. So I think they should have intermingled more. I think more time spent on Nancy as opposed to Katie Cassidy's character. I, I totally agree with you. They the definitely had some pacing issues. Yeah. Well, I can appreciate throwbacks to the original series. I think they used too many knowing if you're creating a remake for fans of the series, nowadays you gotta just not reference too much. When you're trying to do Freddy coming out of the wall, uh, which was originally done as a practical effect, and you do it worse in the remake as a visual effect, that's not gonna sit well with people, especially horror fans. Horror fans like practical effects. And when CGI is overused, it's an immediate red flag and is probably one of the reasons why this has a meta score of 35 <laughs> out of 100. Point, when you remake something, reimagine it in a way where we get new deaths. What he does, his motivations can alter a little bit, right? It's just the essence of the characters that we want. And I think the same can be said with uh, even using Nancy as the protagonist. Yeah. Name her something else because fanboys of the series are gonna be pretty pissed off when she's not the same Nancy. When you see that glove come up, up in the bathtub, it's like, oh, well, it's not the same. As horror fans, I mean, we we know how these all these things played out, and when you keep reminding us of the originals while you're trying to create a new story, you're going to turn us off sometimes. And I really think that they should have left some of those homages on the back burner and just kind of went with their own thing. And in saying that, you can't, because you can't appeal to those fans. And so it's like, it's almost it's, a double-edged sword when yeah, it comes like to Yeah, like if they didn't bring it up, people are gonna be like, how could you not have redone this scene? Right, like that's what I'm saying, like it's not overly overt at times where some fans will be like, oh, that's from this, that's from this, but like it is there. New fans won't notice it. They won't think that this is an homage, but the older fans will. And they'll be like, fuck, it's not as good. And with that, towards the back end of the movie, we do have Freddy start to try and be a little bit more playful with the characters, and I don't think it worked at all. Tag. You're it. I think Freddy is better served when he's more of a psychological, you know, mind fuck, and then he actually brings out a, a, a kill, which can be gory and graphic. But the lead up to that is it's someone in your dreams. He can fuck with everything. You don't even know you're dreaming. And I think this movie needed more play on that. Just, I think that really would have put this movie well ahead of where it needed to be. Time for our final thoughts and ratings. I didn't hate this movie. Not when I first saw it, and not now when I rewatched it for this review. Jackie Earl Haley did a great job portraying Freddy, and it's a nice reimagining of the character. The cinematography in this film was off the hook, and I think the whole tone of this movie was a great way to do a Freddy Krueger film. Unfortunately, I didn't really like a lot of the callbacks that they used because they weren't as good as the originals, and I didn't like the idea of jumping from lead characters through each act of the movie. I think they should have established one lead from the beginning and followed that course through while having multiple characters join her along the way. I thought the gore and the acting were great, but I really wish this film was a new jumping off point for a new reimagining of Freddy and that we'd have multiple films after this. Unfortunately, that isn't the case because it seems in 2018, they're going to be remaking the series again. So I'm gonna give this three drawings of a guy who looks like a penis that shows up in multiple scenes out of five. Personally, I'm not against reboots per se. I think reboots are very much in line as sequels. I think at a certain point after you do so many sequels, you have to reboot. You have to go back kind of to the foundations, to the fundamentals. This movie did that in a way, but it didn't elevate it. It didn't bring any new intrigues. It was just a passable Freddy Krueger. It's not to be hated as everyone does. I don't think it deserves that much hate. 
but I don't think it deserves a lot of love either. I do agree. I don't think this was the version that was going to begin something new with Freddy. I don't think it was going to make new people fall in love with him, and I don't think it was going to make old fans find new love for Freddy or the franchise altogether. That being said, there's still good kills. There's still a story in there that's enjoyable. I just don't think it elevated itself high enough that that's what reboots have to do if they want to reboot. So I'm going to give this three intergalactic search engines out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on A Nightmare on Elm Street, the remake, 2010. What did you think? Do you like Jackie Earl Haley? Or are you like me and think that Zach Ward would be a stellar Freddy? Let us know in the comments and make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything Bloodbath and beyond.